We're now going to look at another uh, matrix that comes up very frequently. It's, it's the incidence matrix associated with a graph. So this comes up in a ton of fields, so we'll look at the basics now. So basically, uh, we have a graph. A uh, graph is something you should know about. You probably have an intuitive idea of what a graph is, but I'll say it a little bit more formally. If you've taken some computer science, you may have seen this in a, in a more formal uh, setting or maybe a math class or some other class where you've already seen this. Uh, for example, electrical engineering, where you'd use a, you'd use a graph to represent a circuit. Um, anyway, so here it is. A graph, uh, we're going to consider a graph with n vertices. So I've, I've, I've drawn one down here. Um, and it'll give you a rough idea. So this is just a baby example. This has got four vertices, and the vertices are usually drawn as like circle or dots or something like that. So here, it's got four vertices. Um, some people use other names for vertices, like nodes is another uh, common name used for a vertex of a graph. Um, and then there are also edges. Now an edge is an arrow, and it's oriented, so it goes from one node to another, or from one vertex to another. So for example, that's an edge. And here we're drawing them. They're typically drawn as uh, arrows. Um, and the, the arrow, of course, tells you where it goes from and to. So for example, this is an edge that goes from vertex one to vertex two. And we're actually calling it edge number one in this case. Okay, and so we have N vertices and we have M uh, edges. Oh, other names for edges are links is one, edge, link, um, there's probably a couple of other names for it, depending on the field. Maybe branch in electrical engineering is another name for it. So a bunch of people have different uh, different names uh, for for a different nomenclature for a graph. Okay, now associated with this graph, one very one very common way to describe a graph is by its incidence matrix. And um, so this is a matrix. It's it's n by m. So it's the number of vertices. And that's the number of rows. And the number of columns is the number of edges. And it's defined this way, it's Aij is equal to, uh, it's 1 if edge j, remember the second index in, is going to index the edges or the links, um, and the first index, i, is going to index the nodes, so or, or the nodes or the vertices. So it's plus 1 if edge j points into node i, and it's minus 1 if edge, edge j points out of node i, and it's zero otherwise. So what that tells you is a column which consists of a fixed value of j and all i's, a column corresponds, the jth column tells you about the jth edge. And of course, an edge only go, it goes from one node to another node. And that tells you that every column of this matrix has exactly one plus one and one minus one. All the other entries are zero. Okay, so that's, that's what this uh, looks like. Um, so here is an example of a graph, um, and here is the corresponding uh, incidence matrix for that graph. So let's take a look at what, uh, what we see here. Let's audit it. Uh, well, let's take edge one, okay? So edge number one goes from vertex one to vertex two. So, and then remember, vert edge one is associated with the first column of A. And so here's the first column of A, and you see, sure enough, uh, this says it goes to node two, that's why there's a plus one here. Minus one says it comes out of node one, and that's why there's a minus one. And it, it is, doesn't have anything to do with node three or node four. That's what these zeros mean here. Um, and I think the fancy way to say it is you would say that edge one is not incident to you know, vertices three or four. That's why there's zeros there. Um, and so let's, we can actually, uh, I could ask some questions. Uh, for example, we've already discussed that the columns of an incidence matrix correspond, each one, each column describes one edge or link in, in, the, uh, in the graph. And it'll have a plus one and a minus one, period. Uh, now the rows are more interesting. Let's take like the third row and let's ask ourselves, what does it mean? Well, the third row is associated with node three. That's over here. And what it says is it now, if you go along that row, it tells you whether or not that edge is either coming into that node or going out of that node or, or doesn't even touch that node, is not incident to that node. And so, for example, if we go across the third row, we see zero, zero, and that means that edges one and two don't have anything to do with node three. And that's true. Here's node one, here's, sorry, edge one, 
and here's edge two. And you can see that they, they go between one and two and one and four and have absolutely nothing to do with node three. So those are correct. Then you get a plus one and that says that this, is, this tells you that edge three is points into node three. And indeed, that's the case. You can see this. Um, it also says that, so in other words, a plus one indicates that that edge is incoming. Um, the minus one in four and five says that, that edges four and five go out of node three. And let's check that. And sure enough, that's right. So these are outgoing edges, right? So that, that's an example. So, so again, the columns tell you about a single edge um, and it tells you, well, very little. It tells you wh where the edge comes from and where it goes. Um, and a row tells you focuses on a node and it tells you which of the edges are coming in which are going out, which are incoming, which are outgoing, and which have nothing to do with that node. Okay, so that's a that's a graph. Um, now these come up in a ton of, of applications. I'll I'll say a little bit about it, and we'll probably see some later in the class as well. Okay, so very common uh, is this is um, we imagine that the m vector x uh, is going to give you the flows of something along an edge, right? So graphs often tell you in that case, by the way, in that case, a graph might be called a network. Right, like a, a transportation network or something like that, or a uh, well, an energy or power network. Um, so usually you can interpret what flows along the edges as something like it could be heat, it could be money, it could be power, as in an electricity uh, distribution system. It could be mass, literally masses flowing from one process to another, um, or it could be people, and the nodes could be locations, and an edge tells you that people are moving from lo one location to another. Um, Okay, now um, in this case, uh, it depends. In many cases, uh, so here, x, there's a common, uh, a, uni well, a universal um, convention is this, is when you're talking about the flow, when x is positive, x sub j is positive, it means that the flow follows the edge direction. Um, if it's negative, it simply means that the flow of people, mass, money, whatever it is you're, you're keeping track of, goes the opposite direction as the edge, the opposite orientation. Uh, so that's the idea of, 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 of a, uh, net, that's sometimes called a network. Um, okay. Now, when you do AX, something super interesting happens. Um, it, it takes a flow. So X is a flow vector. It's a vector of flows on the edges. And if you go back and think about what it means to multiply by X, so if these are the flows, like here's X1, you know, down to X5 here, um, then if you look at one of these, I mean, here we could just, let's, let's audit the bottom one. So what's going to happen is AX is going to be X2 plus X5, okay? They're both positive, okay? I'm just telling you that this is what AX, the fourth entry of X is. Now that fourth entry is associated with the vertex. So let's look over here. And sure enough, look at that. What it tells you is that if, if x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 are the flow of something on each of these edges, then x2 plus x5, that's the, that's the total flowing into node 4. Um, let's look at node 2. That's this thing. And you can see that if I multiply this out, I get x1 minus x3. And so let's look at node 2. Here it is. And what we see is that x1 is the incoming flow on edge 1. x2 3 is the outgoing flow on edge 3, and you see, in fact, it's the net flow uh, for node 2. In other words, it's the, it, it's the algebraic net, like, you know, one unit is coming in, or x1 units are coming in, x3 are going out, and you subtract them, and that's kind of the net amount that's flowing into uh, node 2. So that's the idea. That's, that's what matrix vector multiplication does when you have an incidence matrix. It converts a flow into the net flows at all of the nodes. Um, so that's, that's the idea. Now, a very special equation is AX equals zero, um, and that's called uh, flow conservation. Um, and in that case, if, if X satisfies that, it's called a circulation, right? And that's super interesting, because what it means is flow conservation says that the, to the, the net amount flow, the total amount, the net amount flowing into the node is zero, and that means that the total amount flowing in on incoming edges exactly balances the total the total flow going out of the node on outgoing edges so that that's flow conservation
Uh, so if this was an electrical circuit, you would say this would be called like Kirchhoff current law. And it basically says that all the current coming into that node go and you know balances exactly all the current going out of it. So that's 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 the context in which it comes up. And it's called the circulation. Um, so as a matter of fact, let's just make ourselves a circulation for this graph. Um, so uh, a, a circulation could be uh, something that looks like this. I'll just visualize one. Uh, here's a circulation. Yeah, I'm going to draw it. It's going to go like that and that. Okay. So a circulation says that you have a flow going from node 2 to node 3, uh, another flow going from 3 to 1, and a flow going from 1 to 2. And you can see that it circulates. And so that would correspond exactly to x equals, and let's, let's try to get it right. Um, so it's first on edge 1, so, and it's a 1. Edge 2 is 0. Edge 3 is 1. Uh, at 4 is 1 and 5 is 0. So that is a that is a circulation and you can check with that vector that ax is in fact 0. Okay, so this is the idea. Um, and this this in different in different areas it's going to have different specialized names. Uh, I already mentioned one in circuits this is called uh, Kirchhoff current law and it says well, okay, it's the obvious one. Okay. Now, with graphs, uh, there's, a, uh, there's something that involves the transpose uh, of the incidence matrix, uh, and it's actually very interesting. We'd focused before, x was a vector that gave you flows on the edges. Um, but now what we're going to do, that was an m vector. Now we're going to look at an n vector, and we're going to call it v. And it's going to be, we're going to call it a potential, because that's what it's called in many fields. Mostly comes from physics, mechanics, these kinds of things, or electrical engineering also. Okay. So you have an n vector, and what an n vector is, is it tells you, it gives you a number on each of the nodes of your graph, right? So it says, well, it's 12.6 there, it's minus 11 there, it's 2, you know, that kind of thing. So every, every node on your graph has a, val a number, and we think of it as a potential. Okay, uh, now here, what is very interesting is if you multiply by the transpose of the, uh, of the incidence matrix, you get something super interesting. Um, let's go back to an incidence matrix here. This big in, we, we've messed it up quite a bit. Uh, but if you transpose this in your mind, the rows of a transpose are these, these vectors that are each row is associated with an edge. Um, and it tells you it's got exactly 1, 1, 1, minus 1. And in fact, if you multiply such a vector uh, by if you multiply, sorry, such a, if, if you have the inner product of that vector with another vector, what you're doing is you're taking the difference of two entries. So it turns out the following is what happens. Um, it turns out that um, A transpose V is super interesting. Um, what it is, is it's an M vector of the potential differences across the M edges, right? So um, again, in, in electrical engineering, uh, you would you could think of the, uh, this could be a circuit, the graph could represent a circuit, and the V uh, could represent the voltage at each node. Then when you form A transpose V, what you're getting is a vector, uh, which is the length of the edges, and it tells you the voltage difference across each of the edges. Okay? So that's the idea. Um, now, something else related uh, to potentials uh, is something called the Dirichlet energy. And that'll also come up. Uh, it's super interesting. It's this. Um, what it is, is it is the norm squared of A transpose V. V is a potential, uh, a vector of potentials. And so, as you know, A transpose V gives you a vector now associated uh, with the edges. Each, each component of A transpose V is, corresponds to an edge, and it gives you the difference in the potential across that edge. Okay? And if you take the sum of the squares of them, that gives you this so-called Dirichlet energy. And so here's one way to write that. This says that you only sum, uh, you sum over the edges on, on, on the graph. So whenever two nodes are adjacent, I didn't say that, but when two nodes are connected by an edge, you would say that they are uh, adjacent. Um, so this says that uh, you, you'd sum over the potential differences. Okay? And... Uh, Right now, there's no application of this, but we'll see it later. You should think of the Dirichlet energy as an interesting thing. It is zero when the potential or the vector v 
is constant. In other words, it's a multiple of the ones vector. Why? Because in that case, all of these are zero because every entry of the vector is the same. You subtract them, you get zero, and you sum and square them, you get zero. Um, otherwise, what this is, is it's, a, it's something that measures, uh, I'll say it very roughly, how wiggly uh, your potential V is across the graph, right? It, it penalizes uh, potential differences that are large uh, across an edge, okay? So you would say if, if, if D of V is small, you would say that the potential V is smoothly varying over the graph. Okay, I just mentioned these ideas. We're going to see more of this later, but that's the idea.